We would like to welcome you to the LSU Early Childhood Education Laboratory Preschool presentation about the pandemic health precautions and procedures that we have set forth within our center. We always like to start all of our presentations with our mission and vision. So the mission for the LSU ECELP is to serve as a demonstration component of early childhood education, which is under the umbrella of the School of Education here at LSU. This is accomplished through the delivery of high quality early childhood programming, teacher engagement, advocacy, and cutting edge research. The vision for LSU ECELP is to be re recognized as a leader in the field of early childhood education for international, national, and local contributions to knowledge, policy, and practice through dissemination of cutting edge research. The pandemic orientation is going to cover phase two guidelines, and we are maintaining normal licensing ratios for phase two. We do have modified hours for our children, which is 730 to 415. This was done to be able to accommodate and have our staff um, have enough, have their hours met. And then communication, we will continue to communicate with our families through Daily Note, which is an online platform, or Zoom meetings. We, we still want to encourage our families to reach out and use the Zoom links for um, meeting the teachers so they have that personal face-to-face -face contact. Our daily routines that um, we have set forth through this um, new, through these new procedures is we would like the same person to pick up and drop off their children daily. This is going to minimize contact. In our carpool line, our administrators will be out there taking children out of the car. We'll have a carpool line for infants, one for toddlers, and one for preschoolers. You will have the same person meet you every day to get your child out of the car. The same administrator will be there for the preschools, toddlers, and infants. Drop-off is from 7.30 to 8.30 in your appropriate labeled lanes. If you need to drop off later, you're welcome to call the front desk and someone will meet you at our front door. When we come to the car to, to take your child out of the car, we will take their temperature and we will ask the families to confirm the child has not been sick, had any medication, or been in contact with anybody with COVID. This will be something that we ask you every day upon arrival. Hands will be washed upon arrival in the classroom. The teachers will be washing hands throughout the day many times. So the first thing they will do is wash their hands. Carpool dismissal will be 315 to 415. Once you pull up at 315, we will start calling cars and the teachers will start bringing the children up. If you need to pick up prior, you may call the front desk and someone will meet you at the front door with your child, okay? But all children must be picked up by 4.15. Again, I know we had to shorten our hours, but this was necessary as our teachers, for us to maintain quarantine ratios. Our teachers are not able to float from room to room to help with lunch breaks. So the teachers and children stay with those same kids all day. It's like when you're doing your quarantine at home with your family. This is like a family style quarantine. So your children will not be playing with other children. They will only be playing with the kids in their classroom and those two teachers will be the only people to have contact with your children. Administration is not even able to push into the classrooms. So the healthy environment. Each class, as I said, will self-quarantine, including the playgrounds. We have had facility services come out, split our playgrounds so that our children are only playing with the kids in their classroom. We are still going outside twice a day for that, that 35 to 45 minutes. So they're still getting that fresh air, still being able to run and play. Like I said, teachers will not float between the rooms. We're not sharing toys between the rooms. Teachers and children over two, children over two, should wear a mask. Our teachers are wearing their mask all the time and so are the children. Um, if your child doesn't wear a mask, you know, the teachers are gonna encourage this. They're gonna model. We are not forcing children to wear a mask. 
We will be disinfecting all those high touch surfaces hourly. And this is going to include those door handles, toys, games. We're even spraying down our outdoor equipment. When one class leaves the playground, we have a garden sprayer and they are spraying all the toys down with that disinfectant. It dries in 45 seconds. So everything is being dis highly disinfected. All hands are washed hourly. This includes teachers, children, administration. All of us are washing our hands. Your clothing, your children are requested to bring in three sets of clothing and their, their blanket, depending on their age, which we'll get to in a later slide, towels, and we're machine washing them here at the center with all free and clear, okay? So <clears throat> things will not be sent home on Fridays. We will be taking care of all of this in-house. Meals will not be served family style at this time, and food will be individually prepared from our caterer. They are actually individually preparing all children's meal in containers, bringing a certain number of containers to the classroom, and then teachers are able to put it out on the table for the children to eat. This is cutting down on spread of germs. When the children are finished eating, it goes into a garbage bag and everything is put out to the dumpster. So this is definitely cutting down on, on any exposure. So the children's health, and this includes our staff's health as well. Our staff have been provided COVID-19 education for symptoms. We did some training the week before we were able to open back up so that we're all aware of what to look for. This includes how we're checking the temperatures upon arrival. The teachers also check temps at nap time and upon dismissal. So we have a log of all the temperature of all the children and the staff in our building. Children who begin experiencing symptoms, including a fever of 99.4 or greater, cough, runny nose, they will be isolated from other children until they can be picked up. Now, this part can be a little tricky, but this is our the, the new policy and procedure that we have been directed to set forth by the CDC and the Department of Education for Child Care. Children who are sent home will be required to stay home seven days after the illness begins, or at least three days after the resolution of fever, whichever is longer, okay? And resolution or improvement of respiratory symptoms. So if your child ends up, the fever stops on day six, you still have to stay home three more days. You can't come back on that day seven. So if fever stops on day six, we ask that you stay out till day nine because three days after seven, eight, nine. So you come back on the 10th day. That is due to the fact of what we know about COVID and we know how fevers can go up and down and up and down. And also you can be tested negative one day and positive the next. That's why we're looking at that seven days. Children will not be allowed to return without a doctor's note. So if you're sent home, you must bring a doctor's note when you return. Exclusion of children and staff. Persons with fever of 99.4 or above or other signs of illness will be excluded from the facility. This includes all of us, me as an administrator, our teachers, and our children. Persons diagnosed with COVID-19 will be excluded according to the CDC and Louisiana Department of Health recommendations of 14 to 21 days and symptom free before returning to the center. We do have a sick room set up in the multi-purpose room where if we need to call a parent to come get a child, we can actually quarantine that child in that room and the teacher will be in there with them as well. We've set it up with toys and puzzles and cots and blankets, so um, they will be comfortable. Another new policy is sibling exclusion. If a, if a sick child has a sibling at the center, all children in the family will be ex excluded from the center until seven days after the illness begins or at least three days after the re resolution of fever, whichever is longer, and resolution or improvement in respiratory symptoms. Children will not be allowed to return without a doctor's note. So for our classrooms, um, this is overall general of what we're asking. We do have some more specifics, you know, if you speak with your teacher, but um, we ask that you label everything with your child's name and classroom. We are washing everything here. 
we will throw in, we have one hamper per pod. So both classrooms throwing that stuff in the hamper and going to wash. Masks for children over two. If you send three masks, we're able to launder them here and then we're able to change them out, okay? We're asking for no roly-poly nap mats or stuffed animals. Again, these things can be big and bulky for our washing machine. So we're asking, please do not send those things. Children on cots, please send two crib sheets and a thin blanket, or you can just do two large thin white towels. You know, if you want to put a towel on the bottom and then cover with a towel, that's fine, but no beach towels. Again, that's really bulky for us to have to wash in our washing machine. Infants sleeping in cribs, please send three crib sheets and a napping sack, or you could do two long sleeve onesies to use during nap time. Okay, and they'll put that on them for their naps only. For the infants, Ziploc bag with the bottles will be brought directly to the pod, and then we'll sanitize that as we put them away with a sanitizer. And then at least three changes of clothing for all children at our school. We're asking that you send shirts, shorts and pants, underwear, socks, and then just one pair of extra shoes in case, you know, accidents happen. So we do ask that you check Daily Note every day so that you stay up to date with your teacher. Again, you can schedule Zoom meetings. Your teachers are more than happy to meet with you via Zoom so that you can have that personal connection as, as personal as we can during these times. But um, we appreciate everyone's patience and understanding during this time. And um, if you ever have any questions, you can definitely email um, administration. You can also call our main line and someone would be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.